The only way to learn CSS and responsive web design effectively is through many exercises, so I have created my own tool to organize all those projects. The dependencies of this project are Make to Automate Tasks, NPM and some browser. I recommend Firefox Developer Edition. If you are a Windows user, you will need to use a Bash shell like Git Bash. Let's proceed with the installation steps. This library uses Pug, SAS, and TypeScript, so it will be necessary to have basic knowledge of those tools. The make command will start a local server on port 8080 and launch the Pug, SAS, and TypeScript watchers. Before understanding the index, let's go to the first page. The pages are going to group several projects that we made in CodePen or locally. I recommend that there are only 15 projects per page, otherwise it becomes complicated to search. The way to display a local project is similar to that of a project in CodePen. We can also change the size of the projects, both local and CodePen, to display the responsive behavior. Let's move on to analyze the code. The main code is inside the SRC folder, the pages are in the folder with the same name. The initial part of the code should not be modified, only the last block should be modified. This library uses LiveServer to display the modifications in real time, although sometimes it tends to fail, so sometimes it will be necessary to reload the page manually. To add a CodePen project, we can use the mixin CodePen, as an argument it receives the project ID. It will also be necessary to specify the user to which the project belongs, I will show the configuration in a few moments. We can change the height of the project in the second argument of the mixin. We can also include projects from other users, it is necessary to indicate it this way. To enable the resize option you have to use the mixin codepen flex. This library uses my default codepen user, but this can be changed in the mixin module, in this variable. The local projects are inside the examples folder, and they are also being rendered together with the rest of the pages. Something important that I must emphasize is that the pug code must be in this area, you can change the title too, but the rest has to be here. In the case of TypeScript, so that the compiler does not give us problems we have to execute the script in an auto-invoked function. The styles can be used in the normal way. We can click this button to open the whole project in a new tab and work from there. The creation of new local projects is very simple, I will show it in a few moments. At the top, we can also visualize the width and height of the project to make sure that our breakpoints work correctly. The repository comes with four projects by default. To add a project to the page, we simply use this mixin. To add images, we have to save them in the static folder. We can separate them by folders to organize them better. To make more specific annotations, we can use the markdown format in this way. We can add code blocks, formulas made with latex through MathJax and import images as well. Let's learn how to add a new page. First we stop the server and the watchers with the Ctrl C keys. To create a new page, we simply have to execute the command make next page. 
This will run a script to create the new page and add it to the project automatically. We raise the server using make. We see that a new page has been appended and listed correctly. Here appears a small error, I will fix it in a moment. To separate projects in CodePen it is a good idea to use H2 headers. And that's it, we see that everything works correctly. Now we will see how to add a new local exercise. As with the pages, we stop the server and run the command make next x. This will create a new enumerated exercise ready to be modified and added to some page. The exercise that comes by default is the same picture, let's change the color to check that they are different projects. In this exercise, I have defined the color using TypeScript, I am going to change the color to a green one. Once the changes are saved, we add the exercise to the page using the mix-in and the corresponding number, which in this case is number 5. We run the servers and reload the page. We can see that the exercise has been added to the page correctly. As we have seen, adding pages and exercises is quite simple, since the script that I programmed in Make does all the work. Now, for sure, sometimes you will want to add diagrams or drawings to explain some things. For this, you can use the VS Code plugin called Excaladraw or Draw.io. Once you install the plugins, you can see some examples in the Diagrams folder. These are the best tools for easy drawing. Once you have the diagram done, you export it in the static folder. But before uploading the servers you have to execute the make copy command to copy the images from the src folder to the production folder, which in this case is the docs folder. And indeed the image has been successfully added. If you want to save space, I recommend you to use Draw.io and export the diagrams in SVG format, since this format is much lighter than an image. Finally, let's look at the index part. This page is designed to be a summary of the content of this bundler. You can use the mix-in pages to write a descriptive title for each page. You can also use Markdown and Latex formatting. Remember that it is not a good idea to have more than 9 pages, and each page should not have more than 15 projects. Maybe in a future version I will add the feature to automatically generate a content file, but for now the process will have to be manual. You can upload this code to your GitHub or GitLab, and you can use a free hosting service like Netlify to deploy the project. To deploy a project in Netlify is very simple, you just have to drag it to the indicated area. In our case, the production folder is Docs. And that's it, in this part here, you can give it a descriptive name and save the changes. Once this is done, the project will be on the internet. This is basically all that can do this mini library that I have developed, it helped me a lot at the time to learn CSS. If this video has been helpful, remember that you can support me via PayPal, links in the description. Thank you very much for watching, see you in the next line of code.